Hello guys, welcome to Lali Said We Have and um, today we are going to do something very interesting and exciting. So we'll be learning about um, kernel density analysis and then hotspot analysis. So these two are um, related but um, they are distinct um, in terms of their concept, especially in the field of um, GIS. So for the kernel density analysis, this technique um, calculates um, density of points or events in a geographic um, space. So you have your um, geographic or spatial um, data like healthcare facilities, um, could be clinics, pharmacies, hospitals, herbal centers, or um, health centers. Where you could have um, crime data, you could have um, um, diseases, you want to map them and then make a density an analysis out of them to see areas where there's um, um, concentration or whether there's um, dispersion of um, that activity in your steady um, interest. And um, it is very useful when you're using the kernel density analysis because it creates a continuous um, surface where high density areas are represented by um, peaks and then low density areas are represented by um, um, valleys. So you could have a um, shade of colors representing what you want. So as I stated earlier, it is very, very useful, especially when you are identifying um, general patterns of um, concentration or dispersion in your geographic data. And we also have the hotspot analysis. Um, in ArcMap, there's a feature called the Greatest or Gi Statistics, and it identifies significant clusters or high or low um, values in your um, data. So using the hotspot analysis, you can be able to pinpoint in specific um, locations where values are unusually high or probably um, low compared to the surrounding areas. So this is um, also very, very important or useful when you are detecting um, spatial patterns like um, crimes, um, crime hotspots, disease clusters, or probably economic um, disparities. So there's an important um, tool too. So let's get started um, with the kernel density. So for today, we'll be using just two information to of our spatial data so i have my region of interest so this is a district in a municipality sorry in ghana the east municipality ghana west africa and the sub-saharan african region and then these are my healthcare facilities so specifically pharmacies so i want to see um whether there's a concentration or there's a dispersion in my data here so what I need to do is just open my Act Two box. Then I go to my Spatial Analyst and Two. Then I click the Density Analysis. Then I input my Pharmacy and Data to so the Population field. So the Population field um, is just um, a field that you want to use to calculate or create your continuous data. But don't worry, if you don't have anything like that, you can just choose none. It doesn't still matter. What it's what matters is that you have is a point data. You have a point data or you have a line data and you want to um, work with. So you can see here. So the options and default behaviors for the field um, are listed below. So use none if no item or special value will be used and each and feature will be counted once. You can use shape otherwise and everything. If you have a um, specific population value or a targeted value, so the population is just a targeted value you want to use to create your density. But if you don't have any, don't worry, just use select none and you'll be cool. So to demonstrate more of that, you can open your attributes table so these are some of the attributes informations. So 
So here we don't have any important population target or um, a target group. So that's why we are selecting them. So let's say you have your um, facility types. You have a specific target group you want to perform that kernel density on. You can go straight to, um, to do that. And my output raster, I can just delete it and then rename it kernel density. So just um, kernel D. Then most important, I come to my environment, my processing extent. So I just make sure the extent is the same as um, my layer here. Then I further come to my um, raster analysis. So for the raster analysis, you come to your uh, mask. Sorry, convert unit. You come to your mask. So the max should also be um, the boundary, your boundary, so that. Um, the kernel density will be within um, the boundary. So once you have done, you can just click on OK and it's going to run um, it for you nicely. So you can see when we turn off this layer, you could see it inside perfectly. So you can um, make it more likely, lively and attractive by going to your properties. So by going to the properties, you want to change the colors. You want to make it a more appreciable. Um, so you can come to symbology. Then as you can see, we have the stretched. So here you can use a um, shade of colors. So probably um, you want to use um, this um, color. So let's just select a shade of blue. Then you can click on apply and you can see here. So this is the stretch, just one color shade of blue. So the deeper ones will tell you where there's a high concentration of facilities and then the least will tell you where there's um, a low um, facility. So usually you can come to the classify, then you select the number of classes. So I can stick with four classes. So just um, the shade of blue. So you can just open your classify, your equal interval. So you have the classification. So we have um, the manual, we have the equal interval, we have the Quantile that is grouping them into four. We have the natural breaks. So usually you can use the equal interval if you want, or you can use the natural and um, breaks. I usually use the natural breaks. Then I click on OK. So probably I want to change my color. I want um, a green color. And I click on apply. So as you can see here, we have a um, different shade. So probably what it means is these areas have less um, distribution or less concentration of um, pharmacies or the pharmacies are dispersed. Whereas the very deep ones um, represent um, high concentration of um, pharmacies so you can use um, different colors if you want so um, let's do with the red shade so as you can see the yellow ones have less and then the very red ones have a high cluster then your label, so you can see zero to and this figure then. And these figures are editable, so you can edit it to suit your 
um, your preference so anyhow you want seven so anyhow you want you can um so from seven um to nineteen and let's do this one from nineteen to thirty four Then we can also do from 34 to 54. Then from 54 to 84. So these are just values to help you interpret your um, fears. Then you are good to go. So as you can see, it has been changed here. Then the next thing we we'll want to do is to go to your map and layout and um, organize things perfectly. So you need your title. Um, so you can name it Canal Density. You know, density of pharmacies. In the east. So we have it. Um, so it's still I'm loading. So we can just drag it inside and we can just make this a little bigger. And we can see if we can adjust the map a bit. Okay, the size is okay, so we can insect our North Arrow. Usually, you don't make your North Arrows um, so big, then you can come. We insect our um, scale bar. Then you need a legend to help you interpret what you need. So probably you can just take off what you want and then what you don't need. So we need this. So and we can choose to bring your pharmacies, what are viewed and Probably you don't need it. You can just um, take it out and just click on next, next. Oh, sorry. So we need to select it. There you have it. Then you can make um, a grid if you want to right click. You come to your properties. You come to your grid, select new grid. So usually I prefer the graphical, so it divides the map by meridians and and parallels, so as you can see. So the labels only, you don't want to see lines in your map, so labels only. Then here I prefer to um, place every parallel at every 70 seconds longitude and then 70 seconds um, latitude so i'm going to demonstrate um, why i'm selecting this so let's just look at this clearly then next next then you apply so as you can see here this is what i mean by placing them in 70s so if i want to change them so the interval so if i'm supposed to do with the 10 10 so we can clear this let's try to use a new grid same graphical one labels only and let's maintain this 30 okay next 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 finish so you see you are going to get lots of 
So at every 30, 30 seconds, you're going to get a coordinate, 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 and then this sometimes makes your map um, horrible. So why don't you just use place them 70 or more 80, 90, depending on what you want. Okay, so once you're done, you click on OK, and then you have this. And you can also change um, the frame of your the map so you can come to the change layout so you want an a1 and um, a2 portrait or you want an a2 landscape so you can see a preview here so when we select the portrait this is what we are going to get then you can probably um, zoom in then let's drag it closer let's see if we can make it bigger a little okay so this is a2 then probably we can do with this it's a title kennel density map so to edit this you can just change the symbol and then the size so we can decrease it to 35 we can make it bold and and click on ok and apply and there you go Canada Institute of Pharmacy is in the east you need a north arrow We need a skill bar. And we need a legend. The legend is very, very important. Because that's what helps you um, explain or interpret your, your map. Okay, then we can use our grid. Let's use 80. 80. Next, next, next. Finish. Apply. And there we go. So you can zoom in to see. zoom out then when you're done you come to your file then you come to export map then you can name it wherever you want so kennel D then you can use any file format you want JPEG I usually like the resolution to be um, 400 dots per inch so that when you even zoom in you can still maintain um, the quality or the betterness of the image so guys this is um, how to perform density analysis in um, ArcMap so you want to see where there's a high concentration or where there's a less concentration of um, any spatial activity or spatial data in a region or a community so in my next video we'll be um, learning how to do the hotspot analysis which is also a similar one to this so guys thank you so much for watching make sure you do subscribe to the channel and hit the notification button so anytime i upload a new video you'll be the first to see thank you and make sure you subscribe